always wins. What is up, guys? Gamer the Video Game Scientist from VG Bootcamp here, and this is Perry Footstool Combo. Over 10 years ago, I made a video called Grounded Footstool Comboing that showcased that when you grounded footstool someone, certain characters can combo up. When Smash 4 came out, this trend continued with Mega Man. It's so well, TK. <gasps> oh, there, here we go. Uh oh, here we go. Are you ready? Uh oh, are you ready? Uh -oh. He practices these. And you too. I try to, you know, warp and then immediately get scooped up off of that. Oh, oh my oh. God! Jesus! And ultimate, this translates with Perry Footstool Comboing, aka. PFC. In my last video, I showed PFC with Falco Firebird, and a lot of people said this is hard to do, that it wasn't viable. This is actually far from the truth. PFC is actually much more viable in Ultimate than any other similar technique has been in previous games. This is because of the parry and jump mechanics. But also, aerials have such low landing lag in this game that mastering this technique is incredibly important for destroying very annoying moves. Like mobile sword characters, so Ike is like, he has the sword, but he's not moving too fast. He's just creating this impenetrable zone. Right, I mean, well, yeah, exactly. This hitbox has just come out so Before we get started, I have to briefly explain shield and jump mechanics as they are an ultimate. When you shield an attack, both players go into shield lag slash shield freeze. When you parry a move, both players go into shield freeze, but there are a few differences. First of all, the screen lights up and a sound happens, giving you a frame one visual and audio indicator that you can immediately react to. <laughs> Two, there's more shield freeze than normal, so much so that you can not only react to whether or not you parried, but also where you are in relation to your opponent when you get the parry off. You should watch my video on audible tech chasing. I go over human reaction time and all that information way, way, way more in depth. Go check it out. After shield freeze, the person shielding goes through shield stun. Well, the other person finishes their animation. Ike's Nair has three frames of shield stun. When you parry though, you don't go through shield stun. You can immediately act. Ike's Nair has eight frames of landing lag. So if he spaces it so he lands on the ground right after shield stop is over, it's minus five on shield and minus eight on parry. Meaning on shield, you have to hit him within five frames to punish it. And on parry, you have to hit him within eight frames to punish it before you can act. But after you block something, you're still in your shield, limiting your options. Whereas when you parry, your shield's down, you have access to your full kit. So for something as annoying as Ike's Nair, eight frames isn't a lot. A lot of dash crabs can't even get there in time, and most moves that can get there in time are weak tilts and weak jabs, with very few exceptions, like Snake's up tilt. This is where parry footstool comboing comes into play. Because jump squad animations are universally three frames long, you can get a parry footstool off as fast as four frames. That's as quick as a lot of jabs. In reality, it'll be more like five to eight frames, but that's still incredibly fast and punishes most aerials. Also, when aerials are on their landing lag animation, there are no collision boxes, so getting the footstool off is much easier than when just trying to footstool somebody in their standing animation. Grounded footstool animations are universally 21 frames long, and they are not invincible. So when you parry footstool, you're taking what's normally a six, eight, or 10 frame punish window and turning it to a 21 frame punish window. That's a lot of extra time, and lets a lot of characters get access to stronger hitting moves. Now that we understand how it all works, let's go step by step on how to actually do it. First, go for a parry. Wait and react to see whether it hits, and see where you are in relation to your opponent when it hits. If you see the opponent is gonna land inside of you, just tap the jump button during the parry, and then as soon as it's over, tap it again to get the footstool. If you see your opponent is gonna land right in front of you, hold forward and tap the jump button during the parry animation. This will buffer a jump towards your opponent. So as soon as the parry animation's over, you tap jump again and you'll get the footstool. If you're a little bit further from your opponent, and this is character to character, hold forward during the parry animation, and as soon as it's over, double tap jump. This is the hardest one to do, but you'll still get the footstool animation off. And lastly, don't go for what you can't do. If your opponent is too far away, go for a normal punish that isn't as strong or just reset the situation. It's that simple. 
It'll take some getting used to, but the more you do it, the more your muscle memory will get used to it, and the better and better you'll get at it. It's actually kind of crazy because in the video I made with Falco, multiple times I accidentally footstooled Wolf while he was still in the air. That's how good this is. Now, before I show you all the labbing I've done and all the awesome parry footstool combo punishes I've come up with, let me get a few things out of the way for when you do your own labbing. Some mistakes I don't want you to run into. First of all, if your character has a very, very strong option out of parry, there is no reason to go for their PFC. For example, Zero Suit Samus can PFC down air, but she has a four frame up B and it kills. There's almost no reason to go for the PFC down air instead of just parrying straight up into boost kick. Second, if a move is really, really fast and works with PFC, you might as well just do it out of the parry. A good example of this is Fox Shine. You might as well just parry shine instead of going for PFC shine. It's fast. Just do it out of the parry. Now onto the good stuff. Here are all the basic PFC punishes that I've come up with. Now that those are out of the way, let's get to the juicy stuff. Next, we have Mega Man Z Drop Blade. It's a little different in Ultimate. It has more lag, it puts the opponent in a better position for combos, you just can't do the crazy footstool shenanigans that you could do in Smash 4. Now, throwing the blade forward takes 12 frames, so in a lot of instances with moves like Ike Snare, you're gonna have to go for the footstool punish. Now, you could also just go for a reversed instant Z Drop, but if you're facing your opponent, that option will not be available. And the only option, if you're trying to get a quick punish on something like Ike Nair, is going to be the Footstool Z-Drop. At lower percents, it can combo to basically anything. At higher percents, it combos an up tilt. That being said, his up tilt does hit on frame 6. So if the opponent is really close to you, you might as well just go for the up tilt. Next, there's Mewtwo's PFC Double Dump Cancel, Confusion. This move hits on frame 16, so the only time you're going to punish an aerial with this is using PFC. It's ultra viable though, he had this in Smash 4, it was a little different, but it's kind of easier to do now. It leads to everything, you should definitely go for it. Next, we have Peach's Float Cancel out of PFC. This is incredibly good because you can do every single aerial. You can pretty much do whatever you want. Obviously, at lower percents, Parry Down Tilt is your best option because it combos into everything. But at higher percents, she can't get any kills off her Down Tilt. So the best thing to do is PFC float and then instantly forward air and float backwards while doing the forward air to hit with the crown, the strong part. This fadeback fair starts killing characters between 100 and 140 percent from mid stage. It's probably one of her best options out of parry. Her up smash is too slow and her forward smash is too slow on most good aerials. This next one I really like. It's PFC fire hydrant with Pac-Man. Basically Pac-Man instantly throws the fire hydrant down but because it hits the opponent it causes so much lag that as soon as it's done Pac-Man can almost immediately act. At low percents you can combo to infinite At higher percents it has kill confirms with the key uh, Something really interesting about this on taller characters you'll still be in the air once the animation's over, so you can choose to land on the hydrant and then do whatever you want, or buffer a double jump and instantly go after the opponent. Whether the opponent goes to the left or the right is just character dependent. Bowser Juniors, when you guys master this technique, Bowser Juniors actually gonna go up on the tier list because this leads to kills, this leads to combos, this leads to edge guards. It is amazing. First of all, I think it's called Bomb Voyage. It combos into his uppie. 
At 0%, this combos into the hit. That's like 35%. At higher percents, at like 140, it just straight up kills. So it's a good option. But more importantly, the clown cart. Because you get the aerial version, it knocks the opponent into a spot for a perfect combo. And at high percents, this leads into his forward air, which does kill. So now you have a four to seven frame kill confirm. Secondly, on shorter characters, you can choose to go on the ground or go in the air. So if you do this spin out, it kills incredibly early. Something else that's really, really cool about it is you can choose whether you wanna go left or right. So you decide where your opponent goes. This is like really, really good. I wanna see y'all punishing every aerial in the game with this thing. Anyways, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was a long one. I worked really, really hard on it though, and I hope you guys appreciate it. If you do, consider liking it, consider subscribing, and if you really, really do, consider hitting that notification bell. By the way, something that YouTube brought up to me, they sent it to my dashboard. A lot of you guys have notifications turned on for my channel, but on your phone, you don't have notifications turned on on your YouTube app, which means you don't get sent my notifications. If you wanna get sent my notifications on your phone, make sure and turn on notifications on your YouTube app. Anyways, I'm really busy. I'm actually recording this the night before I head out to CEO. So it's back to the lab with me. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, by the way, Inkling's got a footstool animation. If you wait till the second frame to attack, you go really low to the ground. Like, it's glitched, so a lot of characters can just destroy and clean off a parry footstool combo. It's like... Really bad. Sorry, Cosmos! to the lab again, not again, back to the lab.